The Baldwin County Public School System, considered one of the finest educational environments in the entire state of Alabama, has a history beginning in the latter part of the 18th century, when his records indicate Alabama's first public schoolhouse was built in the North Baldwin County community of Tinsaw in 1799. At that time, nearly 10 years prior to Baldwin being organized as a county, the area remained geographically expanse. Agriculture served as king, and family farms dotted every section of the county. However, in this era of extremely limited highway systems, individual communities built their own respective public schoolhouses with the Board of Education supplying teachers to provide instruction. In the early part of the 20th century, the Baldwin County Public School System boasted over 80 separate school districts, each with their own individual public schoolhouse. As time progressed, marked with improvements in transportation and engineering, numerous school districts were consolidated into nearby areas, leaving us today with very few of the original public schoolhouses which distinguished, beginning in 1799, Baldwin County as the birthplace of Alabama's first public schoolhouse. This documentary, commissioned by the Honorable County Commissioners of Baldwin County and Honorable Members of the Baldwin County Board of Education, seeks to illuminate these few remaining and historic original public schoolhouses in an effort to pay tribute to one of the finest public school systems in Alabama. The old Daphne Junior High School, presently the premises of Daphne North Elementary School, remains one of the few remaining historic schoolhouses in Baldwin County, which imbues an architectural design reminiscent of those former schoolhouse construction standards set by the State Board of Education in the early 20th century. Its facade and interior accompaniments are simple and classic in design, but expanse in area as a remedy in a former era without the luxuries provided by central air conditioning to lessen the effects of the long hot summer months upon both students and teachers alike. The school had its beginnings as a training school for the former Daphne State Normal School, a nearby state sanctioned training school devoted specifically toward the endeavor of training modern school teachers for Alabama in the early to mid 1900s. And as a training school, its premises were not considered part of the county's public school system as the Baldwin County Board of Education only furnished the training school its teachers. However, as time progressed, coupled with the closure by the state of the Daphne State Normal School, the contract for construction of the old Daphne Junior High School was finally let. At its grand opening in the mid 20th century, the old Daphne Junior High School was recognized as one of the most modern buildings of its time. After Daphne Normal was closed, there was a sum of money that had been gathered down there in that community. I don't remember how much of it, how much it was, said, but a good, a, a, it was several thousands of dollars, and it was in Montgomery and earmarked for the use of uh, Daphne Normal, but it was never spent there. And after the school had been closed, the the state rather uh, in the same manner that they compensated the community for the loss of the courthouse, they compensated them for the loss of, of, the, of its successor, the, the normal school, by building them the most modern junior high school that Baldwin County had ever seen. The, that school was as far ahead in construction as this particular office I'm sitting in is ahead of uh, the office that I occupied here with the Board of Education. It was a giant step forward. The floors were beautiful pine quarter sawed and finished with varnish. Uh, no, no carver saw <laughs> ever saw the floor of, of Daphne Junior High School. When it was time to refinish, it was sanded and, uh, and, and re -varnished. Large auditorium, uh, 
the very best wooden desks that American Seating Company produced were used for that particular school. In the later years in my time, the classrooms became so crowded that those large wooden, comfortable wooden desks, although they had survived 25 years of use, they were in perfect condition. But the, the, the teachers and principal began to ask for smaller desks so they could accommodate the students. There simply was not room in, in, a, in the extra large rooms for those, for 35 of those extra, extra big desks. We took them out and put them in storage and gradually issued them to other schools as they could use them. So those, those, those beautiful American, wooden American seating company desks are now scattered all over Baldwin County, and I'm sure some of them are still in use somewhere. A modern PA system, unheard of in those days, was installed in Daphne Junior High School. A new IBM clock system that uh, corrected the time from from the main office with a with a, a clock in every classroom was installed. State of the art. We held all of our teachers' meetings at Daphne Junior High School because it it, it had the facility uh, to to hold all the teachers at one time. It, it bumped Robertsdale uh, High School Auditorium uh, for a place to meet teachers because, uh, because it had the, the, the new, mo new modern facility and, and a stage. And Aubrey McVeigh, who had taught in that cramped jail f facility, was chosen as the principal of the new junior high school. And he took care of that building as you would not believe. So Daphne was a fun place to grow up. I grew up, I went to uh, Daphne Junior High School. It was a school that went from the first grade to the ninth grade. And the year Miss Carter got me, I was in the fifth grade. And she told my mother, she said, Joan has a lot of possibilities, but she has 40, 149 names to walk off. I walked every noon, every recess, every afternoon, and when I got out of the fifth grade, I still had 149 names to walk off. So I, I got the names because I talked all the time. And Miss Herman was my second grade teacher, and she was my first grade teacher. And so when I passed the second grade, I went up to her and I told her, I said, goody, 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 Miss Herman, I'm out of your class now. And she says, well, I don't know about that. She says, Dr. McVeigh told me I'd be your third grade teacher. So I learned not to go up and tell the teachers anything like that. But Daphne Junior High School was a very fun place for me. Um, while I was there in the ninth grade, we wrote, uh, with three other girls, we wrote a play, and it was called You Can't Stop That Rockin' and Rollin'. And about that time, Reverend Murphy came to town, and he wanted us all to take a pledge to uh, not dance anymore. Well, I couldn't take a pledge, because I knew I couldn't do that. So we invited everybody to school, and we had produced the play. And the play was much like Grease. And we had a school teacher who was uh, horrified that we were all up on the stage doing a, a sock hop. So I guess that was my first experience with uh, uh, producing a play in the ninth grade. And um, Professor uh, Jackson Gay, he came over to me and he said, I thought you could do better than that. I thought you were going to be Kate Smith and sing God Bless America. <laughs> and all you little hoodlums up there on the stage. <laughs> so that's just a little, little glimpse at how Daphne was. And um, we all lived for the May Day celebrations to come in May. And uh, we would, the classrooms would run their uh, queens and then uh, we'd put their jars out at uh, Trowns and everybody would collect, collect their pennies and quarters to get to run for the May Day Queen. And um, 
after 1945, um, May Day, uh, there was over 5,000 people who were here celebrating May Day. They came from all over the county, Mobile, and it was the most prestigious uh, event. It was sort of like the Mardi Gras, and we celebrated the May, uh, May Day up until the uh, late or early 70s when people kind of lost interest and we had television and stuff like that. But uh, Daphne has always had its wonderful schools. Uh, Judge Hall started a school um, where the Catholic school is today. And Iffy Dreyer, she had a school uh, where the old Howard Hotel was. And they had a school out on Randall Avenue where the young kids would, would come and go to school. And my daddy always said, that he and his brothers went there to the school. And one time, the boys from Daphne had beat them up. So uh, they went home, they had a black eye. And so uh, my grandmother, Mom Minnie, told them, said, you better not ever come back here with a black eye unless the guys got more than you come home with. And so they said that she would hide in the woods with her lighter knots. And those boys, <laughs> could, they had to fight. <laughs> They could not fight. And uh, I think this is a little bit before Al's time. Uh, I think it got a little more gentler after Al's time. But uh, we have had some rowdy times uh, here in Daphne. And uh, we've all enjoyed it and been a part of it. And uh, the schools, to show you, in the early 1960s, they ran a, uh, a survey and a study. And... Uh, on the eastern shore here, we had the highest educational level of any place in the state. And we would like to think that it was because of the start with the old normal school because almost all those people went on and became lawyers and judges and things like that. So uh, we've had a good exposure here in Daphne and it's been a wonderful place to live. And I'm probably the only person in the world who gets to run around town causing trouble all the time. <laughs> One time I told my grandmother, I said, there's some of my relatives I don't want to claim kin to. And she said, well, honey, she said, you can't do anything about your relatives, but let's hope you pick better friends. So that's what I tried to do when I was going to school. And my daddy said, pick the really smart kids and hang around those. Well, in Daphne Junior High School, I had an uncle, his name was J.C., and my grandmother called him J.C. because all the rest of the family had so many nicknames, she thought if she just named him J.C., he wouldn't have any nicknames. Well, he had more nicknames than anybody. And he was a little bit slow in school, and there was Nuber and there was Jerry, and they all hung around, and they couldn't do anything with them. And so the state of Alabama, you had to be 16 before you could quit going to school. And so Mr. McVeigh, who was the principal at that time, had taken them, and, and uh, they were helping the janitor out. So they ran on ahead of the janitor, went into the boiler room, and they turned all the knobs on the boiler room, and the janitor got there just before the school was getting ready to blow up. So <laughs> Mr. McVeigh called my grandmother and told her, said, you just cannot send J.C. back to school anymore. He just won't work at doing anything. So my grandmother says, but he's got to be there till he's 16 years old. He said, but you just don't understand, Miss Burnett. He cannot come back to school. Just forget about school. <laughs> so that was the end of J.C.'s schooling. So my daddy got J.C. a job uh, as a caddy. Uh, at the Grand Hotel, and he loved that job. And uh, Mr. Roberts, who ran the Grand Hotel, discovered something about J.C. He was real steadfast, he'd work hard if you praised him, and you gave him a little money. So he worked for Mr. Roberts for a long time. I came to Daphne for, uh, in 1935 with my grandparents. My, uh, this is from Perdita, Alabama, just still, still in Baldwin County. My grandmother was a school teacher, and uh, she needed to get a, a, a teaching certificate. And uh, she came, she, we moved to Daphne. I was living with my grandparents, uh, my sister and I, in 1935, and she came to get her teaching certificate, and that's uh, 
when I started school in Daphne. And I was in the fourth grade and went to school in the fourth grade was in the old jail uh, down where the normal school was. And uh, some things to remember about the old jail or, the, or that uh, facility down there was heavy rains, it would, it, water would flow through the building uh, on the first floor. Some of us were on the second floor and it wasn't too bad. Another thing I remember about it was the, the water system. They had their own water system, had a, a single engine uh, gasoline pump, I mean motor to drive a pump to fill the, the water tank. This water tank was on a wood frame, a uh, wood tower. It was wood and uh, squirrels used to drink out of the water <laughs> quite often. They would drown and uh, sometimes we didn't know they were in there until they, until they, you start, the water started tasting foul. <laughs> so you, when, in the sixth grade you moved over to the old uh, county courthouse, which is the normal school at that time. And uh, uh, the, the building was a little bit better, but they were condemned and I, I don't know what's, what year, but uh, the, year, the year it was condemned, we went to school, uh, attended classes in the Woodman Hall and some of the churches. And the following year, we attended in Lowell House up here. That, in the following year, it was, uh, they completed this, uh, this uh, building, this new school, and uh, I was in eighth grade at that time. I believe, if I remember right, remember right, the, when we first moved up here, it was the same way it was before. Daphne only went through eight, eight grades. And uh, the first class that was in here uh, went to Fair Oak after the eighth grade. And my class was the first one, I believe, if I'm, my memory is correct, to finish the ninth grade here. And what I remember about this place, uh, uh, Mr. Mike Vabe the, was up both the, the principal and the basketball coach, like other schools. And, uh, but uh, this school had a, a uh, speaker system, I mean a two-way communication system. Mr. Mack could sit in his office in here and uh, monitor any classroom in the school. And he could, he could also talk to you. And uh, I remember one, he could, it was also hooked up to radio and I remember one year uh, he listened, let us listen to part of a, a World Series. And I believe we might have heard one of uh, uh, Mr. Roosevelt's fireside talks, a, re -talk, a replay of it. Uh, but uh, these are the things that I remember about the school. And one thing that, that we were hoping when they built this school, uh, like some other schools in the, in the county, they put the basketball court in the auditorium. And Mr. Mack was looking forward to that. We had a court, a dirt court. But uh, after they saw that nice new auditorium, they said, well, we're not going to mess it up. <laughs> so we still didn't get a, a basketball court inside. But uh, this was uh, a, quite an event moving into a brand new building like this uh, after we'd, the two years before, or three years, that uh, the old uh, jailhouse and the, uh, the Woodman Hall and uh, uh, a home and then moving in something like this it was quite an event and uh, we didn't dare mark on the walls we, <laughs> we were too proud of it I visited here a few years ago and I was amazed at the the graffiti on the walls in the school here uh, it looks good now compared to what it did then. But this is uh, what I remember about it, and uh, I uh, cherish my days going to school here. I had made a lot of friends and had some good teachers. Uh, that uh, I probably learned uh, as much from this, my eighth and ninth grade teachers as I, uh, as I did the the seven years before that. Um, uh, I guess I'd learned how to study more and learn how to read a little bit. <laughs> I've learned, uh, this is where I learned to, to study. And uh, 
it gave me a good uh, basic uh, basis for going on to college and uh, uh, graduating uh, from the University of Alabama. And but the basic, the, you know, you have to learn how to you have to learn how to study, and you have to learn uh, if you've been if you've been to college, you have to learn how to how to study for for each teacher. And uh, we had a teacher here, Mary Grisco, that. Uh, was not uh, no nonsense. I mean, not this is not to say she didn't have a sense of humor, but if she gave you an assignment, you didn't want to come back the next day and tell her you hadn't completed it, because she would make you feel about this this tall in front of the whole class. She just she just it, just, it wouldn't be uh, she wouldn't call you a, uh, a dummy or anything, but just. She'd try to make you feel bad by not, by not doing what you should have done or could have done. And it, uh, she was, she influenced me and my studying. Uh, another man that had, another person that had influence on me was uh, Albert McVeigh, the principal. Uh, uh, he's, uh, I greatly admired him for, for, for the way he taught he taught, and he also was coach of basketball. I played basketball, and uh, he he uh, he helped me a lot. Another one that uh, I remember, uh, Ms. Riggins. Ms. Riggins was a good uh, good teacher, and uh, Ms. Pickens, another one. Those those I, I remember. Uh, I had some others, but those I remember. Uh, so the others must not have impressed me as much. <laughs> I don't remember their name. But uh, they influenced me at this school. I started here in Daphne Junior High School the first year that we had a school here. And I, as the saying goes, I did walk to school about a mile, I guess. And we had a, a, a good school. And we had very good teachers, and I remember some of them. I remember uh, Mrs. McVeigh, who was the principal's wife. I had braids, and she used to take my hair down and comb it and put them back up. And we had uh, other teachers that uh, I can remember from first grade on. And we uh, had PE and the normal things that had, but Daphne Junior High School was a school, as I said, this, this school, this building was the very first one that we had that would go first through the ninth grade. I can remember that the principal, Mr. McVeigh, lived down the street from me and that I would ride to school with him and I didn't like that because who wants to ride to school with the principal? And I would get out of the car and all the other students would look at me, but he was a very good man, a very good principal. I remember, uh, talking in class when I was in Miss Hurley's room and Leonard with Leonard Grisco, so our punishment was to walk in the in the schoolyard and we would walk together, but we would pass each other and we would carry on a conversation every time we passed. So our punishment wasn't too lasting. <laughs> um, I can remember going, as I said, walking back and forth to school and uh, having, making friends here who, who I still have some friends that I made in, in, in this very school. I remember getting in trouble one time. There had been a fight on the way home from school, not me. Some boys were fighting, so the next day, Mr. McVeigh called us in this room over here in the office. Well, he didn't call me in. He called my best friend in and asked her all kinds of questions. She came out the door, and I said, Esther, what happened? I got called in the office for asking her. He said it was none of my business. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's the one time I remember that I got in trouble other than the time that I walked with Leonard Garisco for talking and we kept talking as we walked. From our school, we would, send, we would have students go to Daphne May Day, which was a big part of Daphne. It was a big celebration, but from Daphne Junior High School, we would send students, I believe it was uh, probably this, either the second and third grade or third and fourth grade. And I danced in the maypole at least twice, the maypole dance, and that was a dance that you had the pole in the middle and you had 
streamers coming down and you would dance and you would, you would go in between each other and you would eventually have the whole pole wrapped with the, the, with the streamers. I was also in uh, some of the May Day courts, but that was in later years. But that was a big part of uh, Daphne Junior High School's uh, activities. We were in, May Day, May Day was a big thing in Daphne. We had politicians that would come and speak, and uh, it, it was a very big affair. After they condemned the school uh, at the old courthouse and jailhouse, we were then um, sent to the Baptist Church in Daphne for school, Woodman Hall in Daphne, and also a large house uh, close to this school here. And then they finally did complete the school and I, ha I was here in my eighth and ninth grade. I graduated in May of 1941 from Daphne, and then I went on to uh, Fairhope. But the two teachers that I remember most uh, while I was here was Mary Grisco, uh, who was a local uh, resident. She taught us English, and she was, I think, and all of my school was the best teacher that I ever had. And Mr. McVeigh, who was the principal uh, at Daphne, uh, taught us math and science. And uh, that's about all I remember. I know at one time we did do some school plays, and <clears throat> I was a uh, I think an old maid in one of the plays, and I have a picture at home of my old maid dress. School in Belfast for the first six years. I came to Daphne, and I went down to school at the jailhouse and where the old courthouse was. And we moved around that year. For, we went to the Baptist Church, we went to the Woodman Hall, and then we came to the Thompson House. And then when I was in the eighth grade, they finished the school here, and we came to the, this school. And I finished the ninth grade here, and then I went to Fairhope. When we got to the new school, we thought we were in heaven because it was such a wonderful place. It had indoor plumbing and had running water, and it didn't have air conditioning, but the school rooms were all so beautiful. We just thought we were really something. <laughs> And we had some very good teachers here at that time. And I was here till the ninth grade, then I went to Fairhope. We had a graduation ceremony when we were in the ninth grade. I lived out in the country and we had to put, the school bus would come around to pick us up. We'd all meet up in on the corner of the road for, to get on the bus. And the bus driver would, when he'd start, he'd say, everybody grab their rocking chair arm because we're going to be going. And he would stop the bus every now and then because some of the boys would be fussing and and get in a fight or something and he'd make them get off the bus and he'd fuss at them and then he'd let them get back home. <laughs> yeah, well, when we started school, uh, down, uh, when, I, when I came into Daphne, I had started the uh, old normal school. Down there was the old jailhouse, the Daphne jailhouse. It used to be the courthouse back years ago. And uh, then we moved from there up to the Woodman Hall in, uh, in Daphne. And then after we were there at the Wooden Hall, some of us were transferred then over to the old uh, uh, Lowell House building, which was up the street. It was about a two-story building. We had classes in there, and uh, there was several grades in there. And uh, then we left there after this school was completed and came here. Well, we had a new building to come into. It was nice, real nice, big cafeteria, big office, PA system all through the building. And uh, they, uh, they had a, the county had set up a program for some students that uh, would help them out on their tuition and everything else, and it was called the NYA. Well, we, we done, I think they paid us $6 a month for for working in the in the school, and we there was a couple of boys that worked uh, in the building here, and we go around and open all of the windows, 
set the windows and be sure that it was all closed every evening and after school before we caught our bus and went out, went out of here. And uh, sometimes we'd have to sweep the floors, the hall. We had to keep the hall swept and stuff like that. We helped the janitors, really, is what it was. And uh, we done our jobs around the school when we was called on, a couple of us, two or three of us. I said, I was still working with the NYA when I graduated from here at school in, in, in uh, 1940, 1942. And uh, my wife and I, we went to school together. We were in the same class. And we, and in fact, I knew her from a little girl on up. We, we grew up together in the same community, Spanish Fort. And uh, her dad was, uh, in business there, he had a little store and he'd run the bus, school bus. Thought he was one of the first school buses to run to Daphne and uh, from, from that area back in the early days. In fact, I might have, it might have been around 19, 1930, 32 or 33, he started the bus route. He had a, we had a wooden bus body on a chassis of a truck it had the side curtains and everything that rolled out. And this, the, bus was, the bus body was made from an old colored gentleman down here in Daphne. And he made the body for the bus, which was, then was really classic because it had side curtains and everything. It was, and uh, he, his daughter, he done it for his kids so oh, they could get them here to Daphne School. Before that, my wife started in Robertsdale. She was staying with her aunt out there because they didn't have no transportation from Spanish Fort to Daphne. So he went and got him a bus, made him a bus to haul the kids. And so a bunch of us kids started from Spanish Fort riding the school bus to here to Daphne. And of course, I knew my wife before that because uh, we grew up in the same community. And we, when I got out of service, we got married. <laughs> Married. She finished high school in Fairhope. So and then I went to work for, for as a mechanic and auto mechanic, and I worked there for, for ten years at Jim Gaskin in Fairhope. And then I went from there to Brooklyn Field and worked there for ten years, and Brooklyn closed, and I went to Pensacola, finished up my time. And, uh, and anyway, getting back to the school, when the school was new and everything, of course it is, it's a nice school now. Mr. Mack used to sit in his office and he would check in on every room, he could tell. And some of the rooms was, well, kind of loud. <laughs> and there was one of the, one of the teachers who she, she was, she, she couldn't hear very well, and she had a time with her classes. <laughs> and them students in our class were having a ball one day, and a couple of them got in the locker room, a couple students got in the locker in the locker, and then shut the door, and they were pounding on the locker. Mr. Mack was sitting in the office taking it all in. He walked down there, and pulled the door open, said, all right, let's go to the office. Got two students out of the locker room. <laughs> They were beating on the wall, and she didn't know where the noise was coming from. She couldn't hear. They were taking advantage of her. And when they, and a lot of time when they had tests in that room, they'd somebody get the answers before she ever knew they even had them, and they'd pass them all around. <laughs> it was awful. And he used to check every day on them on the on the classrooms. He'd get them on the PA system, and you you, you got pretty well behave yourself, because he'd be, he'd, he'd open, at any time he'd open that classroom door and he'd catch you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, then we, I guess we, we had a pretty good time here. We had a good class and everything. We, uh, we had a good teachers. They were good. And I, I, I really liked Mr. Mike Bay. He was a good, good principal. He, I thought a lot of him. Well, Inez and I, 
Inez and I was always close together. We, we, we really liked each other. And when I went into the service, Inez used, I used to get a letter from her every day, from my Inez. She wrote me every day when I was in the service. And uh, we, I was really true to her because I, I stayed that way with her because I, we, we liked each other. And we, we, when I'd come home on leave and everything, we went out together and everything. We had good times. And, and uh, even when I was a boy, uh, on Sundays, when I came to church with my grandfather and them, he always used to go back by there and pick his paper and stuff up at the little store and stop at the store. And I'd get off and stay with them, Mr. and Ms. Busby and then Inez and Frank and her brother. Well, that was her brother, Frank. And we'd stay together. And, and on the afternoons, Sunday afternoon, Mr. Busby would take us to the ball game. We'd go over to Hartwell Field to the ball games and see the brave, I mean the Bears play then, uh, Mobile Bears and what have you. And, or they were the Mobile Shippers then, back then. It was the Mobile Shippers when we first started going. And then they went to the Bears. And we, we had a lot of good times together. And so... And then when we graduated from here together, well, she went on to Fairhope. And I went on to work, and I finally wound up in the Army in that same year. Well, we went from, uh, from the old, uh, I say from the Woodman Hall on up to the old, all the way up to here. The old low building and here together. We was always in the same class. Then when we got here, Miss, Miss Pickens, at that time, was Miss Pickens, and she taught us from the seventh grade all the way through, carried us all the way through the ninth. We stayed in her class. She went from one class to the other. With the, could have been, she could have been in a lower class. So I don't remember that much about it, about that far back, but I know that then eventually she got married and I her, she went to Miss Hammock, Miss, <laughs> Miss, uh, uh, Herman, Miss Herman. But anyway, she she taught us, and Mr. McVeigh taught us some of the classes. And I think Miss Riggins was our science teacher. She taught in the science room down here, which was the science room right back here. I started out playing basketball for Mr. McVeigh in the sixth grade, and I played I played four years with him. Hmm from sixth grade on up to the ninth, through the ninth. And uh, he was a good basketball coach. We had, a good, we had a pretty good team back then. But we didn't have no court. We played on a dirt court. Mr. Mack says, I will not put a basketball court in my auditorium. He said, they ain't gonna mess up my floors. So we played on the dirt. When we had home games at night, we played away from home. That's where we played. <laughs> so, Mr. Mack was pretty strict about his floors, <laughs> and uh, we had a good time. He was good. He was a good coach, and he was a good teacher too. And later on in years, I used to see him coming to baseball games and play with one of the children. He had grandkids playing, playing for. Uh, he had the one daughter, and he had she had some children playing uh, sports. And he'd go to games and we'd see him. And you sit and talk with him a lot. In the late 1890s, students in the Daphne community were going to school at, in a building on Randall Avenue. And with the institution and the formation of the Daphne Normal School, State Teachers College, in the building that had been the courthouse in Daphne, students were then allowed to go there as part of a model school that was used to instruct teachers. Now the normal school itself was a school that was grades 1 through 12. And the senior high school and the junior high school were actually called the normal school and the elementary school was called the model school. When students finished the senior high school, they could continue in what was called normal 1 class and normal two class, but students in the normal college, which was the state 
authorized teacher college for the area, um, would attend school from many, they had come here from many other areas, and would attend school there, and part of the curriculum would include student teaching in the model school. The faculty for the normal school taught high school classes as well as the teachers who were in training. In teacher training in Alabama was authorized by the State Department of Education, and a two-year normal school would provide enough education for a teacher who had satisfactorily completed that course of study to be certified as a teacher in the state of Alabama. If a teacher chose to go on to a four-year institution and earn a bachelor's degree, the Normal school in Daphne was actually a feeder school for Livingston, but those courses today, just like a community college, would transfer to a four-year university. The Daphne Normal School, or the State Teacher College on Mobile Bay in Daphne, Alabama, was especially associated with Livingston University in Livingston, Alabama. And upon the closing of the Daphne Normal Teachers College in Daphne, those records were transferred to Livingston University and are housed there today at the University of West Alabama in Livingston. Teacher training throughout the state was authorized at the beginning of the 20th century through the State Board of Education. And the college in Daphne was considered one of the highest in standards and in teachers. The reputation of teachers graduating with certifi certification from Daphne Normal School have indeed proven to be some of the most outstanding educational leaders in the state, not only in Baldwin County, but in the state and nationally. Many of them did go on to national, to state and national jobs. The, upon the closing of Daphne Normal School and the building of Daphne Junior High, those same standards for teacher excellence were continued and Daphne Junior High, built in 1939, was without a doubt the most modern of all school buildings in the state. The first one in Baldwin County with an intercom that was run by an electric clock from the office and there were equipment and modern desks in schools, in the school rooms that were unheard of up to that time in Baldwin County. So the excellence in education in Daphne is indeed one of those that's part of the rich heritage of Baldwin County. According to an Alabama State Board of Education publication entitled An Administrator's Handbook of School Transportation, school transportation apparently began in Alabama in 1912 when a Mr. Ben L. Tu uh, arranged to close a one-room school he was teaching and to transport himself and the school children under his care by wagon to join the faculty and student body of a school known as the Ward School of Ward, Alabama, and that's in Sumter County. By 1915, the Alabama legislature had passed a law permitting boards of education to consolidate schools and use tax funds to transport those public school students, just as had Mr. Tu done on his own some three years earlier. The move to consolidate schools became a statewide initiative and by 1920, the state had somewhere around 157 vehicles which were used to transport children. Now, when we think of school children and transportation, we think of the familiar yellow passenger buses that travel the city and county roads throughout the school year. And this has not always been the case. Transportation of school children was born out of a desire to make education more uniform and efficient, but was only feasible once roadways in the states became serviceable year-round. Most early country roadways were dirt or at best gravel, which became quagmires during the wet winter months and were just virtually untravelable. And the earliest buses weren't really buses at all. Um, certainly they had to meet state standards eventually, but the earliest modes of transport were made up of what local residents could cobble together. As a result, there was a wide assortment of vehicles assigned to carry children to and from school. Uh, many weren't even vehicles as we know them today. Of the state's 157 vehicles on the road in 1920, 123 were motorized while 34 remained horse-drawn. To increase the safety and efficiency of the Alabama Department of Education in the 1930s began prescribing construction standards for school buses. And pretty soon the state began to specify the details of construction and ownership of school transportation. 
For example, an education department publication uh, published in the 1930s called Consolidation of Schools and Transportation of Pupils stated that transportation vehicles may be owned by the county or could be owned by the school district or even private parties that held contracts to transport pupils. So they had a direct connection with the individual or the company or the school system that was transporting the students. And that way they had control over the vehicle and how they were transported. In order to take into consideration the state of advance for every region, the Department of Education also maintained that the county or school district could own the wagon bodies built for use on an ordinary two-horse farm wagon, many of which were being converted to carry students to and from schools. One time I told my grandmother, I said, there's some of my relatives I don't want to claim kin to. And she said, well, honey, she said, you can't do anything about your relatives, but let's hope you pick better friends. So that's what I tried to do when I was going to school. And my daddy said, pick the really smart kids and hang around those. Well, in Daphne Junior High School, I had an uncle, his name was J.C., and my grandmother called him J.C. because all the rest of the family had so many nicknames, she thought if she just named him J.C., he wouldn't have any nicknames. Well, he had more nicknames than anybody. And he was a little bit slow in school, and there was Newber, and there was Jerry, and they all hung around and they couldn't do anything with them. And so the state of Alabama, you had to be 16 before you could quit going to school. And so Mr. McVeigh, who was the principal at that time, had taken them and, and uh, they were helping the janitor out. So they ran on ahead of the janitor, went into the boiler room, and they turned all the knobs on the boiler room and the janitor got there just before the school was getting ready to blow up. So <laughs> Mr. McVeigh called my grandmother and told her, said, you just cannot send J.C. back to school anymore. He just won't work at doing anything. So my grandmother says, but he's got to be there till he's 16 years old. He said, but you just don't understand, Miss Burnett. He cannot come back to school. Just forget about school. <laughs> so that was the end of J.C.'s schooling. So my daddy got J.C. a job uh, as a caddy uh, at the Grand Hotel, and he loved that job. And uh, Mr. Roberts, who ran the Grand Hotel, discovered something about J.C. He was real steadfast, he'd work hard if you praised him, and you gave him a little money. So he worked for Mr. Roberts for a long time. My grandfather told me a lot of old Indian tales, and of course when I'd go to school at Daphne School, that would be one of the reasons that I would get, I'd have to do all the walking was because I did all the talking and telling all the old tales. So he told me about uh, Princess Katie Ann, who was his great-grandmother, and she was the granddaughter of Chief Minowa, and he was living with her, and she was teaching him how to become a chief on his own. And she had made him a chief, and they went in the woods, and they would find wild mushrooms, and they'd find wild uh, herbs and things, and she would take them and put them on her wagon, and then she'd go sell them. So there were some mean people in the area who would, after they had collected their money, they would come and rob them. And they knocked Miss Katie over the head one time, and they took all of her money. And they did this several times. So she said she was getting tired of that. She was going to take care of it the next time. Well, Princess Katie carried a rattlesnake in her little pouch on the side of her, her belt there. And so when the guy knocked her in the head, she let the rattlesnake out, and it bit the guy, and he died. So the other guy went on in, told the judge that uh, Princess Katie had committed murder. So they were going to try Princess Katie. So when they come to court, everybody was in the court, and Princess Katie just opened up her pouch, threw the rattlesnake out, and everybody disappeared from the courtroom because she created such a chaos. So the judge dismissed the trial, and he told him, he said, we'll come back in a week or two, and we'll have the trial. So it was a week or two, and they were in the trial, and the judge said, uh, Miss Katie, come up here to this, uh, up here, let me talk to you for a while. And he said, Miss Katie, he says, do you have that rattlesnake with you? And she said, yes, Judge, I do. I'm never without it. And he hit, knocked on the, uh, the uh, judge's podium, and he said, case dismissed. That was an act of God all along. 